Many of the founding fathers were brewers, not just Samuel Adams, but George Washington left his recipe for porter uh, in the New York Public Library. Thomas Jefferson had a brewery there at Monticello. Uh, James Madison had a brewery in, in his estate and actually proposed the idea of a national brewery funded by the government. As conflict with the British became inevitable, beer stood ready to do its patriotic duty. The taverns uh, were the, as Daniel Webster said, the headquarters of the revolution. When the Sons of Liberty wanted to have a gathering, the way they got people to their meetings was they threw a kegger. It's still commonly in use today to gather a bunch of people together. Uh, the um, with Sons of Liberty weren't alone. The militia in various towns, they had established training day. People weren't coming to the training day. Uh, but when they threw a keg of beer on for when the conclusion of the drills, they started getting a better turnout. Beginning in the mid-1800s, the new breweries fostered a series of breakthroughs that ushered in the era of modern brewing. First was commercial refrigeration, which used liquefied ammonia to keep ice frozen indefinitely. Suddenly, brewers of lager were free of the four seasons. Artificial refrigeration really enabled brewers to make beer year-round, to not necessarily rely on caves to do their aging, so they could now build their aging cellars above ground. Adolphus Bush was the first brewer to adopt this technology. In the 1870s, he also pioneered use of the double-walled refrigerated rail car, which drew in outside air and circulated it continuously past large ice bunkers. A national system of ice houses kept a steady flow of ice onto the trains. By the 1880s, barrels of cold beer could reach from coast to coast, especially with the help of another breakthrough. Pasteurization is the other important innovation that was introduced into the brewing industry also by Adolphus Bush. And pasteurization is a simple process of taking the beer, gently heating it for a short period of time, cooling it back down. And by doing that, you're able to stop the yeast from growing and allow the beer to maintain some shelf life. Because prior to that, the beer would leave the brewery and would usually spoil pretty quickly. The beer bottle also reached maturity in this era. There were innovations in glass technology that allowed them to have precision control over the size of bottles. Before that period, the, uh, the breweries had to employ people to bottle by hand. And the last great innovation, although small, had a very large effect, was the bottle cap. A uh, simple crimped piece of tin and steel it allowed the brewers to cap that bottled beer without having to employ an army of people installing flip tops on bottles. Machinery could put this on very easily and it allowed the brewers to ship their beer all over the country. Very good. And Belgian Lambic Ales. In the traditional method of making Lambic beer on a Belgian farm, slats in the fermentation barn open wide, letting in wild yeasts and even bacteria to carry out the fermentation process. Of course, we're not going to rip the uh, top off of our brewery here, so we basically track down the types of wild yeast and bacteria, good bacteria, that we're looking for and do our interpretation of this beer. One of our slogans, I think, was baby gut bacteria. 